A formal strike team breaches the outer walls of a space hulk. From within, a troop of Harlequins ambush the Astartes. Who amongst them will survive? Find out here on Mountain Side Table Talk. Hey folks, Vic here. Welcome to Mountainside Tabletop. Today, I'm bringing my brand new Void Dancer kill team. I've got a Shadow Seer and Death Jester, along with a group of players, and I've given the Neuro Disruptor and Fusion Pistol to two of the normal players, and all of them have blades. For equipment, I've given the Wraithbone Talisman to my leader, Support Grip to my Death Jester, Pure Psycho Crystals to the player with a Neuro Disruptor, and a Death Mask to my other player, who's also my pivotal role for the game. To start out, I'm picking the Comedy Sadith. This team seems like a lot of fun. Obviously, they've got a ton of mobility and a lot of shenanigans with falling back and kind of running in and out of combat. So we'll see if I can just whittle away all the wounds that the Phobos have. Yeah, so I'm going to be playing an elite team in this game, but Vic kind of has an elite team too. He is a bit weaker. He has less health and a worse save than I do, but he can dish out a ton of damage. He's got five regular players and they all kind of scare me. Their fighting is just as good as the fighting that my Reavers have, and two of them have really, really scary ranged weapons as well. I absolutely have to get the Neuro Disruptor and Fusion Pistols off the board as fast as I possibly can. I don't want to get Yote uh, right away. <laughs> Alright, sup y'all, I'm back and I'm playing Vic's Phobos team, the Mountainside Phobes. <laughs> Is that, yeah, yeah Phobes? Yeah, that's, that's, that's them. Alright, so for my list here, I've got a Reaver Sergeant and two Reaver Warriors. Then I'm bringing the Vet, whose weapon's gonna have lethal 5 up and rending. I've got the Saboteur and a Helix Adept. No Marksman, don't at me. For equipment, I'm keeping it simple. I've put a crack grenade on my Helix Adept, and then the Vet and the Saboteur are getting Purity Seals. Really here, I'm just gonna try and be aggressive. I find that I just my playstyle works best when I'm playing aggressively, and I'm probably gonna go Seek and Destroy and try and get as many kills as early as I can and just uh, snowball from there, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a pretty good strategy against me. I'm pretty worried about these Reavers because everything else I feel like I can deal with in combat, but those Reavers are just a nightmare up close. So hopefully I can whittle them away with my little bit of range I have and then uh, get in and do some damage on the infiltrators. So the deployment we're using for today's battle is Duct from the Crit Ops pack and the mission is Capture. In the roll-off, Brad won and chose to be the attacker, so I set up my barricades and operatives first. In the scouting phase, I go for a recon dash and Vic picks the extra barricade. I have the option to keep initiative for myself or to give it to Vic, and I choose to give it to Vic. Then, with all that out of the way, we move on to turning point one. All right, turning point one, strategic ploys. First, Vic passes, then I play Vanguard, and then Vic passes again, so that's it. Then in TAC Ops, Vic reveals Mythic Play, I reveal nothing, and then Vic reveals Recover Item. Then Vic, you're up. All right, well, with the first activation of the game, I'm just gonna move my player up to objective six over by my recovery item and open this door on the way. All right, I'm going to activate this Reaver here, move up to objective one, uh, and open the door on the way for free. But really, it didn't matter if it was free or not. I had enough AP anyway. All right, well, now my pivotal role is going to move up and open the door and hang out in here near objective five. All right, now my Reaver Sergeant is going to open this door for free. Then I'm going to move up onto objective two and strategize. So again, didn't matter that I opened the door for free. Now the Death Jester is going to move up over by Objective 5 as well. 
Okay, my saboteur is going to place his mine on objective four and then slightly dash. That's a really interesting play. I have played Phobos so many times and I never use the mine defensively, but I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's interesting playing uh, against my own team, <laughs> <laughs> learning new strats. All right, well now my player with the fusion pistol is gonna move up to join the other one by objective six and pick up the recovery item. All right, my Helix Adept is going to move up and open this door. I'm putting him in a spot where I can potentially revive the Saboteur if needed, but once again, uh, getting absolutely no value out of having played Vanguard, so good use of that. Yeah. Well, now my lead player is going to move up over to Objective 3. I'm trying to figure out how aggressive I want to be with the uh, Reaver Snake Pit forming on the far side of the map. My veteran now is going to move up closer to Objective 1 and then go on guard. Well, now my Shadow Seer is going to move up and join the leader. It's going to stay concealed and behind this barricade. All right, uh, my Reaver now, my last activation is going to move up and dash past objective one. Dude, the aggression doesn't stop. Did I not learn from the last game? <laughs> All right, well now Brad's out of activation, so my remaining two players are just gonna move up and position by this door. Would love to win initiative and uh, end someone's whole career next turn. Yeah, and that's the end of the first turning point, Vic. Uh, we both score three victory points from primaries and Vic scores one for recover items. So he's leading by one point. Yeah, I mean, I think that went about uh, how they always do on Into the Dark with two elite teams, but honestly, the recover item tack off just feels like free points. Yep, uh, so I'm off to a good start playing Phobos here. I activated Vanguard, used a CP for it, and not once did I need it. Every time I did a mission action, I ended up having an AP left over, so complete waste of CP. Yeah, that is. I mean, I prefer to save my CP to re-roll my ones into twos. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows? <laughs> All right, top of turning point two, and Brad wins the initiative roll. In the strategy phase, Brad plays Boulder Discipline, I play Sagarax Jest, and then Brad plays Vanguard and Shock Assault. Really going all in here, eh? Yep. In target reveal, Brad reveals Shock and Awe, and I reveal Secure Unexplored Rooms. Then, Brad reveals Eliminate Guards and nominates my Shadow Seer to be the target of it. Gotta go for it, dude. Always. Every time I have the chance to pick Seek and Destroy, I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, fair enough. All right, well, uh, first activation here, I'm gonna activate one of my Reavers. First, I'm gonna move and open the door on the way for free because of Vanguard. Finally getting some use out of it here, I think. Next, I'm gonna shoot the player with the Neuro Disruptor, and I get a pretty bad roll. I'm gonna spend a CP here to reroll one of my misses. And then Vic rolls his save and also rolls terribly. Uh, <laughs> and I end up bringing this player down to two HP. But with Bolter Discipline, I can shoot again. I get a much better roll here and uh, I really want to secure the kill. So my one miss, I'm going to reroll with another CP. And luckily the reroll pays off uh, with four hits here. Vic can't possibly live, so he doesn't even need to roll. Well, I hate to lose the Neuro Disruptor, but that Reaver is pretty out in the open and Brad has no CP left, so it's not all bad. So now this player is gonna charge and fight the Reaver. After retaining one crit, I'm gonna spend a CP on the Curtain Falls and fall back for one AP. Not only does this keep me alive and bring the Reaver down a little bit, but it's one for my performance tally. That's annoying. Yeah, That's so is. annoying. I wish you hadn't scored a crit, because then I could have uh, Sagarak jested you, but. Yeah, sag right. saggy rat jested yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, uh, I'm gonna go with my saboteur now. I had a whole plan where I was going to just guard this back point with the mine and then leave, but I changed my mind. The aggression strikes again, Victor. Okay, so I'm going to move and then open this door for free and then shoot the player with the fusion pistol. Vic left him and engaged, so uh, he's getting shot at. All right, I got a crap roll, but I have a purity seal on this guy, so I'm going to use that for a reroll. And Vic's auto-retaining one here for cover, and he takes no damage. But I get to shoot again. So all in all, I end up dealing four damage and the player is down to four HP. All right, well, I've got to take advantage of this guy standing here before the medic comes over to revive him. So the player with the fusion pistol is gonna dash up and take a shot with his AP2 pistol. Absolute yikes, get a terrible, terrible roll. Uh, I'm gonna spend a CP to re-roll it. 
whiff town uh i'm gonna spend a cp to re-roll the other miss and absolute tragedy i should have picked tragedy as my sative yeah. i would have scored 100 points right there <laughs> <laughs> uh absolutely can't believe that your saboteur is still alive and i can't believe that my fusion pistol is just sitting here but what are you gonna do well, one thing you could do is uh, like and sub to Mountainside Tabletop, because I heard that if you like and sub to Mountainside Tabletop, you never re-roll a miss into another oh, miss. yeah, right. I forgot about that, Totally dude. forgot. Yeah. Oh, well. All right, well, yeah, I'm going to go with my medic now, my Helix Adept. I'm going to move and dash, and then I got that crack grenade, so you're about to get cracked, dude. Yep. All right, so I'm chucking it. Okay. I can't re-roll. Ready? Yep. Victor, it's gonna be all ones. It's I know not. it's, gonna, it's be, gonna be all ones. It's gonna be four threes. <sighs> okay, yep, you're dead. You're dead. I'm dead. All right. Everyone's dead. I got a great roll, and uh, your your pistol's down. Yeah, yeah, I lost the pistol, but um, you know, at least I've got a chance for some revenge here. So the next player up is gonna charge the medic, and because of fly, he's able to get past the engagement range of the saboteur. Get a pretty good roll here kills the medic and goes down to 1 HP. This member of the 1 HP gang is brought to you by Iron Priest B. Thanks, Iron Priest. Next, I'm going to take a shot at the saboteur. Only need one hit to go through here. I'm going to spend a CP to make sure it happens, and luckily I get it done. So, lost my best gun, but feels good to bring down two marines. Oof. Yeah. A third of my team just died. <laughs> yeah. Should true. I concede? I think so. Save this us is some time. Literally okay. So I knew that I shouldn't move the saboteur. I had a plan, dude. This is the same thing as the last <laughs> game. I, I I keep doing it. Can't stop, won't stop. Yeah. Alright, well, uh, who knows? Alright, so okay, I'm gonna go with my sergeant now. I can move and dash, and then this player's out in the open, so I'll just shoot. And I get a great roll and I get another kill. So at least that's something, I guess. Yeah. Dude, my plan is in shambles. Mine too, dude. <laughs> this is just getting <laughs> crazy. All right, well, nothing left to do on this side of the map, so I'm going to head over to the other side, and my leader is going to charge this reaver. Because of fly, I can tuck in nicely behind him and avoid any double fights later. So I'm going to fight and easily bring him down, but I do take five damage in the process because Brad keeps rolling crits, so I can't do Sager X chest. Yeah. I would say easy dice, but it's not yeah, looking pretty, easy. Pretty hard dice. <laughs> not looking easy, dude. Was dice. Worst dice. My life. What do you think? After getting that kill, my leader's going to go on guard. All right. Well, half my team's dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess I'll activate this reaver, and I'm going to charge into this player and do a fight, I guess. All right. So I do get a kill. At least that's something. After Brad fights, my leader's gonna take their guard attack and absolutely whiff. Then I was able to charge close enough to the shadows here that I can actually get a shot even though you're in conceal order. So I'm gonna shoot. Not a great roll, I just deal three damage, so you're down to six HP. All right, well now the Death Jester does not need to be asked twice. He's gonna take a shot at that Reaver standing out in the open. Well, at least I was uh, I made a semi-smart move and positioned myself so I would get cover from this, so I'm auto-retaining one. All right, well, five dice hitting on threes and uh, does enough damage and brings him down. I have two guys left. <laughs> <laughs> I have two guys left. Oh. Yeah, but it's definitely your best two. With his remaining APL, the Death Jester's going to move and open the door on the way and hang out near the recovery item and objective six. All right, uh, well, I guess I'm gonna go with my vet and see if I can make something happen. Vic's leader is down to four HP, so I can probably finish him off. So I'm gonna move up and shoot. And I get to kill. Then I'm gonna dash up slightly and then close this door for free for protection. Uh, yeah, it's a shame to lose my leader, but um, I'm still feeling pretty good. So with the final two activations of the turning point, my pivotal role player is going to move to the center of the board and start eyeing Brad's back objective. And then my shadow seer is going to move and stay in cover near objective five. So at the end of the turning point, we both score three points from primaries. And then Vic scores another point from recover item and one more point from secure unexplored rooms. Uh, so I'm down three points and I have two bodies left, which I don't think I can do anything here, dude. I mean... You've got two Space Marines left and two turning points to score points with them. So there's, uh, you know, there's still a lot of play left, I think. 
Yeah, I guess you're you have three bodies left. I guess I'm yeah. not out of it, but it just feels like yeah. the aggro plays have got to stop. You almost got away with it. I if almost... it weren't for that one meddling kid. Yeah. I'm feeling pretty good here. All I need is one of three things to go right in the next turning point. I either need to kill your sergeant or not die on the two attacks you're gonna have on me. I do think if I don't get initiative, it's over. Yeah, probably. Cause if you go first and then you just kill one of my bodies, I like with one body left, I just don't have the numbers. Yeah. But what does give us the numbers are our patron numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before we go on, we want to acknowledge the support of the amazing folks over on our Patreon who literally made this game possible because they selected the matchup, but yep. they make every game possible. Unknowingly, the patrons selected the one team on the list that we didn't have. So uh, thanks to their kind and incredible support, I was able to run to the store, get the team and paint it up in a few days to do this. You're a master speed painter. I don't know about master, but I'm definitely uh, a speed painter. <laughs> yeah, I am a speed painter. <laughs> yeah. Huge thanks to all the patrons that hang out in our Patreon, hang out in our Discord. We've got a ton of super, super supportive people, uh, including our 1HP gangsters and mountain goats. And we just wanted to say thanks. So thanks. And now turning point three. Yeah. All right, Vic, top of turning point three, and we roll for initiative. And tell me who wins. <laughs> Yeah, I win, and that feels pretty good. It's gonna be a tough road ahead. Yeah, definitely. So stage one of my plan is complete, and uh, all I need to do is kill one person. I'm gonna feel really good about it. Well, I've got one CP, and I'm not sure if I need to or not, but I'm gonna play it on Bolter Discipline again. Uh, I think if the opportunity to shoot twice presents itself, I'm gonna need to take it. Then in the target reveal, I'm gonna target the Death Jester as the target of Eliminate Guards because he's the only option. Then you're up first, Vic. All right, here we go. My Death Jester is gonna move out and then do his Shrieking Assault or whatever it's called, which gives my gun Torrent and therefore Lethal Five into the dark. So five dice looking for threes. Oh man, dude, that's terrible. Uh, all right, well, I'm gonna spend a CP because I absolutely have to bring down that Reaver. Yeah. And it just whiffs, man. I'm not even low. I have eight health left. Know, I'm not even man. wounded. <laughs> yeah, that's awful. Um, I mean, I still am feeling okay if I can survive one of the two attacks that's coming in. I guess technically I am wounded because of your uh, shrieking stuff, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm shrieked into woundedness? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. All right, well, let's see what I can do. I'm going to activate my vet, Kool-Aid man through this door, move up, and then shoot this player. I get a crazy roll. Yeah, the Brad yeah. dice are back. They really are, man. What is this? <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, lethal five up and rending. I just wiped this guy off the board. Yeah, that really sucks. But because the guy had a death mask on, it gives me a CP, which I'm going to have to use to hopefully help my death jester survive. All right, well, now I'm just kind of burning an activation. There's really nothing my shadow seer can do to help my cause. So he's got to just stay alive and maybe have to run onto a point in the next turn. So I'm just going to tuck in behind this corner. All right, well, uh, we're already at the last activation of this turning point. What a bloodbath. Yeah. So I have to make something happen here. Obviously, I'm doing that with my Reaver Sergeant because she's the only one left. So first things first, I'm going to take one wild shot and try and kill this Death Jester. I'm hitting on threes here because the ability of the Death Jester's attack made me injured. And I get a, a great roll. Vic needs two fours to survive here. Uh, and, and he doesn't get it. It's all right. I have a reroll. 50-50 chance to stay alive here. And it's the goddamn green dice, man. I think I win, right? Yeah, I think Okay, so. so with that out of the way, I score a point for eliminate guards. Vic can't score a point for his uh, secure unexplored rooms tack op. Then I'm gonna move and dash onto objective six and I'll control it at the end of the turn. So that's shock and awe. Yep. And then those two tack op points plus four points from primaries takes me up to 12 VP and Vic only gets up to 11. Yeah, that's brutal, man. I just needed one of three things to go right. And uh, that might have been the hugest four activation swing we've ever seen. <laughs> crazy. I thought I was screwed. Yeah, I, me too, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we've done the math here and 
there's just no way Vic can come back. Yeah, if I win initiative and my Shadow Seer charges and kills your sergeant, I'll still only score three points, as will you in the next turn, and I'll just lose by one uh, one turning point later. So, yeah. uh, GG. GG. What an absolutely bonkers game that was. Yeah, Ab like, kind of, uh, kind of ridiculous. But absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I thought I pulled another last game. Like, yeah. I thought I ran my saboteur and my healer to their deaths, and then I was going to be down minis, and then I thought I was just done for. But yeah. I managed to just get enough kills to kind of stay in it, and then I got extremely lucky with dice in the last turning point there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think uh, I don't really know what the hell happened. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I was feeling good and then feeling bad and then feeling good again. And now, you know, not great, but yeah. what are you gonna do? Oh man. It was fun playing against the Phobos. I've played as Phobos so many times and uh, it's interesting to see them in the hands of someone else and, you know, have, have an idea for my tricks that I play with them, but you, didn't do any of that and like did a totally different play style and I thought it was a uh, interesting experience. Yeah, this was a super fun game and I mean, it was my first game as Phobos, but I played against them a lot. Yeah. And I think this was what maybe your fourth game as Void Dancers something or something like, like that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we're we're still learning the teams. Don't add us for all our uh, misplays. But honestly, yeah. super fun. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks to the patrons for picking a pretty outrageous matchup. I was not expecting it. I I was certain that we were gonna get like Legionary versus Intercession, but uh, they came through with two really interesting teams. Yep. So anyway, thanks for sticking around. Yeah. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time.